Now, ladies and gentlemen, major, major first thing. Now, this in, in this problem, they already have the information plotted, right? So we don't have to plot the information. Step number two, though, which you guys want to do, is identify if is the transverse axis horizontal or vertical. And again, guys, while you're learning this stuff, why don't you just go the extra step and just label it? All right? You guys can hopefully obviously see that here are my two vertices, right? So my transverse axis is horizontal. That's very important because that's going to tell us what formula we're going to use. Does that make sense? OK. Now, we also know that what Marina was talking about was that our center is in, the, in between our two vertices. So it's pretty obvious to see that um, if these are two vertices, then my center is going to be at the origin, which is at 0, 0. All right. Our two vertices have the coordinate points 2, 0 and negative 2, 0. And the equation that we're going to use for a horizontal is going to be x minus h squared over a squared minus y minus k squared over b squared equals 1. Does everybody agree with me why I'm using that formula? Or at least does everybody understand why I'm using that formula instead of that formula? OK? Remember, x always, whenever, x is, whenever x is over the a, it's a horizontal transverse axis or a horizontal major axis for an ellipse. If y is over a, it's a vertical transverse axis for a hyperbola or a vertical uh, major axis for a, an ellipse. All right, so um, we need to figure out, basically what we need to do is plug in all the information that we are given. So the distance from the center to a vertice we know is a. We know a center represents h and k. So let's plug in that information. Oh, um, and the only other thing we're given is this coordinate point, 3 comma y. So what does 3 comma y represent? That doesn't represent b. We already know what a is. We already know what h and k is. So it has to represent an x and a y coordinate. Because remember, that's what when you're looking at an equation, that's what x and y represents. x and y represents the infinite set of many points that make up that graph. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug 3 in for x uh, minus 0. You don't really need to write the minus 0, but I'm just doing it so you guys see what I did. a is 2. And then that's minus y, which is 2, minus 0 squared. We do not know b squared equals 1. So what's the only value that we need to figure out? B. B. All right. So 3 minus 0 is 3. 3 squared is 9. So it's 9 over 4 minus 2 minus 0 is 2. 2 squared is 4. 4 over b squared equals 1. Follow me? No. 3 minus 0 is 3. 3 squared is 9. 2 squared is 4. OK, now we need to be able to solve this. I'm going to, use, I'm going to need a little bit more room. So is it OK if I erase this? No? Actually, I have room over here, don't I? Yeah, I can do it over here. All right, so let's say we have 9 over 4 minus 4 over b squared equals 1. We need to solve for b squared. This is a good Algebra 2 question. First thing we need to do is isolate the variable. So I'm going to subtract a 9 fourths on both sides, minus 9 fourths. Um, I can convert this so that's negative 4 over b squared. If you guys can think of the 1, you can think of 1 as 4 over 4 minus 9 over 4. Would you guys agree? 1 minus 9 fourths is the same thing as 4 fourths minus 9 fourths. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So therefore, that's equal to um, negative 5 over 4. Right? Then you could use the cross product if you guys wanted to. Um, I really do not like the cross product. I like multiplying. Um, you could also think about this as multiplying by the reciprocal, because I just don't like the cross product. So I'm going to multiply by b squared over negative 4 on both sides. Um, b squared over negative 4. That multiplies to give me 1 equals negative 5 b squared over um, negative 16. Now, to solve for b, I can just multiply by the reciprocal of this, which is a negative 16 over 5. If you
you guys would have done the cross product, you would have got the exact same answer. And therefore, what I have here, wait, those divide out. Sorry. That divides to a positive, right? Negative divided by negative, positive. Positive, so therefore I have 16 over 5 equals b squared. Hmm. OK, then we got to solve. Oh, and that's b squared right there. Yes. OK. Um, I don't think you guys are going to have one this, this difficult. Let's, you know, it'd be nice if b squared was just 16. But let me show you what to do when you do have a fraction. Um, so now I know what b squared is. And I know what a squared is. Right? Yeah. And h and k is 0, so I don't include it. So now I just need to plug them into my equation. So I just write this as x squared over 4 minus y squared over 16 over 5 equals 1. Correct? Correct. How did I get 4? Well, a is 2. So a squared is. Um, However, we don't want to have our fraction in the denominator. That's not very cool. Have a fraction in the denominator. Mm -hmm. Yes? Oh, right, right, right. Wait, how did you get uh, you subtract a non fourth and you get negative five squared? I'm sorry? I just did I mean just do cross just do the cross product. B squared negative four over b squared equals negative five over four. Same thing, same math. I just did it a different way. Okay. Um, so what I can do, though, is if I multiply this exact same fraction by the reciprocal, as long as you're multiplying the fraction top and bottom by the same number, you're not changing the number. So therefore, my final answer is x squared over 4 minus 5y squared over um, 16 equals 1. Don't really worry so much about the fraction at the end. I doubt you guys are going to have something that difficult, but you might. So it's good to go over it.